I found a whole pile of free furniture out at the curb last week and in this video I'm going to bring you guys along with me as I take the totally trashed sideboard out of that group and turn it into a piece that someone will be proud to showcase in their home again. I knew as soon as I saw the lines of this piece that it was going to make a fantastic flip. Unfortunately, it is really badly beat up and the doors on the front are so warped that they don't even close anymore. Since the doors are in such a bad way, I decided to start there. I removed the doors and all of the hinge hardware, and then I had to enlist the help of my super handy husband to make me some new ones. Since I wanted to keep the cost of this flip to a minimum, we decided to use some MDF that we already had to make the new doors out of. Ideally, I think it would be nice to match the maple that the rest of the cabinet is built with, but that's a bit of an investment, and since I'm going to be painting this, I don't really think it's a necessary one. After Doug cut the board down to the right size, he measured out where the hinges needed to go and used a giant drill bit to drill out new cavities for them. This kind of carpentry that requires skill and precision is not at all in my wheelhouse, so I am exceptionally grateful to have him on my team. Once he had the hinges installed on the new door blanks, he test fit them onto the cabinet to make sure that they would work. Then he pulled them back off again and ran them through his router table so that the edges of the doors would match the shape or the profile of the original doors and drawers. After we got the new doors under control, it was time for me to take over again. I gave everything a good cleanup with some hot water and Dawn dish soap to remove any grease or grime that might cause an issue with my paint down the line. And once everything was nice and dry, I started to sand. This piece is solid maple, which means I can sand away a lot of the deep scars without having to worry about sanding through a layer of veneer. I started with an 80 grit paper on my random orbital sander to remove the old finish and start working out those bad gashes. When I had most of the damage smoothed out, I mixed up some Minwax high performance wood filler to fill in any remaining gouges, holes, or seams that I wanted to cover up. After letting my filler dry for 30 minutes, I came back with some 120 grit sandpaper to start smoothing out the surface. The next step on this is going to be primer. I'll be using my favorite bin shellac base primer. I prime most of my pieces to make sure that I don't have any problems with wood tannin bleed through later down the line. 
This also gives me a really great, smooth, unified canvas to paint on. I usually apply two coats of my primer and then once it's dry, I sand it down with a fine grit sandpaper like this 320 grit to smooth out any texture that was caused by my roller. For the paint on this sideboard, I decided on House and Canvas chalk finish furniture paint in the color Oceana. It is this stunning deep teal blue. This paint is very thick, so I always add a little bit of water to thin it out for spraying. I applied my paint with my Gravity Fed HVLP pneumatic spray gun. I'll leave a card here for a video all about my sprayer for anyone who's new to the channel. While my first coat of paint dried, I took the hardware outside to spray it with some Rust-Oleum spray paint in pure gold. I love this original hardware and especially on this piece, but the brass plating was mostly gone, so this is going to be the best way for me to revive it and reuse it. I ended up needing to spray three coats of this really intense color to get solid coverage on this piece. Each coat needs about an hour to dry and I usually only sand between coats if it has dried with a weird orange peely texture or if a little winged friend has landed in my finish. The next day I was ready to spray my favorite protective top coat over my paint. I sprayed two coats of this Varathene diamond wood finish in a satin sheen over the whole piece and a few hours later I got Doug to help me carry everything inside the house. I needed to drill new holes to attach my hardware to the new doors, so I used the old doors as a template to line myself up. I used an awl to poke myself some little marks so that I knew exactly where to drill. After I reattached all of the hardware and reinstalled the doors, I added one finishing touch of some fun Dalmatian print paper into the drawers. I'll leave a link to this paper and all of the other supplies that I used on this project down in the description box. I like to stick my liners down with a repositionable spray glue. It holds the paper securely in place, but once it's time to change it out into something fresh, the next person who comes along can easily peel it up without any extra effort and it won't leave any mess behind. And with this last little finishing touch, I think now is the perfect time to show you guys this completed makeover. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away? Show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? Wonder. 
I am so obsessed with this blue. And I think that this was the perfect piece to showcase this intense color. Now all I have left to do is edit my finished staged photographs and get this guy listed for sale on Facebook Marketplace. I know it's gonna bring me a really great profit, but more importantly, I saved this incredible piece of furniture from the trash and I had so much fun bringing my design concept to life on this one. If you are a fan of high-end, high-impact trash to treasure stories like this, or just furniture flips in general, please make sure that you are subscribed before you go, and I will catch you guys next time.